It's the Life Upfront Engineering Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Waters, covering ideas, people, and products on the cutting edge of product development. As always, join the conversation at lifeupfront.com. Today on the show, a French mechanical engineer living in South Korea, working for a South Korean CAE company as the European Business Development Manager. Cyprien Rousseau, welcome. Well, hello, Jeff, and thank you very much for your invitation to this podcast. I, I am an active follower, let's say, of your blog, uh, and I was very pleased that you can hear, invite me to join this show. Well, I appreciate that. Well, so I first came across Midas NFX about a year ago. And, you know, as you know, from reading my blog, you know, I just have this uh, weird interest mm -hmm. in all things CAE. And, uh, you know, I thought I knew all the companies out there. Um, every once in a while, I'll find a new company that pops up. Uh, it's usually, you know, a couple of uh, grad students or uh, university professors who have a good idea and they try to turn it into a business. So I understand yeah. when I haven't heard of those. But uh, Midas and NFX caught my attention because it covers so much ground in CAE. It was a really a, a full product list of all the capabilities that you'd find in some of the bigger tools out there like MSC uh, or from Ansys. And, um, you know, the fact that I hadn't heard of it uh, really just got my attention. So uh, you were telling me earlier why I didn't hear of Midas and NFX uh, before a year ago. Yeah, actually, it didn't really pop up like you said. It is. Uh, it was more or less hidden in the Asian market. Let's say we. It was uh, the development was uh, began since uh, 2005. Let's say, and it was released in 2007 in uh, Korea, Japan, and China. And it's only since last year, in 2012, that we released it on the international market. I see. Now, before we get into the product, and, and actually, I think, you know, for my listeners, one of the important things will be for me to just sort of read directly from your website all of the capabilities that you claim. Um, okay. But, but I, yeah. I do find you um, very interesting. So how did you end up in Korea, speaking Korean uh, <laughs> as, as a French engineer? Well, this is a very long story, and <laughs> but it's very, let's say, interesting, maybe. Uh, actually, I began to learn Japanese before all that. And uh, after that, I met a, my Chinese wife. So I learned Chinese and I end up in China. And after learning Chinese and doing a master of three years in, uh, in Tsinghua University in Beijing, I met a lot of Korean friends and I decided to learn Korean too in China. So after three years, I found this company, Midas, and I just decided to, to go there because I had a big interest for Korea. And I think that technology is really uh, developing very fast. And I, I saw a great potential in this company. So this is why I ended up there in uh, Korea doing what I'm doing right now. All right. Well, um most uh see uh, most FEA tools that you'll see out there um certainly can handle the very basics uh you know linear stress analysis for example um and even the tools that uh are really built for non-specialist engineers often CAD designers at least here in the states um you know like Mechanica or Algor uh or or Cosmos yes. you know these tools don't pretend to even have the higher end capabilities because probably the uh, end user they have in mind wouldn't know how to use those properly anyway. So they confine uh, the mm -hmm. products to a smaller set of capabilities, the easier stuff, let's say, um, you know, you certainly cover that ground, but then you go beyond. So I'll just read off a few of the things directly from your website. So obviously linear stress, uh, modal buckling analysis, um, Nonlinear analysis, and that can be geometric, material, um, contact, which I find very interesting. Um, so you even have the concept of uh, sort of a, a linear contact analysis uh, with automatic um, yes. setting up of pairs of bodies yes. that could touch, correct? 
Yes, yes, correct. We have general contacts. We have uh, automatic contacts. So just by clicking, it can find all the contact peers. And we have something also called breaking weld contacts, which uh, can contact can even separate uh, when the contact force is uh, bigger than a certain uh, force. So we have a lot of types of uh, contacts too. And, and in your nonlinear um, material analysis, so if you have, um, for example, a rubber gasket that is, uh, you know, going through a, a, a drastic yeah. deformation and it can fold in on itself and it, and it actually can mm-hmm. contact itself. Um, so it's one of the unfortunate uh, terms in the CAE space. They call yes, it self-contact. Sure. Uh, that's a dirt. That's a that's a dirty joke for some of my <laughs> listeners. But uh, um, self touching, I think, is what they call it. But uh, it's very it, it's very difficult. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot going on computationally behind that, and um, so so you actually yes. can handle that as yes. as well. So this this kind yes, of self contact. Yes. And as you uh, underlined, we don't only have elastoplastic material, but also rubber material. So uh, it is uh, hyperelastic. And we have a module which can calculate automatically the coefficient of the rubber material from the test data. So experimental data and do the analysis with it. All right. So that would seem like a lot. I mean, if if you just take contact, for example, um, you know, that's that's a cutoff for a lot of the low end tools. They just don't deal with contact at all. I mean, you'll have constraints and boundary conditions. You can fix something, but uh Basically, you're welding yes. everything together. Um, so, so you go beyond that into this contact realm, but you don't stop there. Now uh, you also have this fatigue yes. capability. Um, and we'll come back to that in just a minute. Um, mm-hmm. Composites, uh, you know, linear dynamic analysis, explicit dynamic analysis, heat transfer, uh, you know, combination heat and stress, uh, and then yeah. CFD, which um, – you know, if you've read my blog, you know, I have a, yes. a real interest in the CFD <laughs> yes, side of I things do. as well. Mm-hmm. And and so I picked out a couple of points here from the description of what you do in CFD. It's not just your basic CFD either. So you can do uh, moving mesh, uh, de- deformed mesh and free surface simulation, which is, again, you know, that's one of the higher end things that people in CFD mm-hmm. will attempt. Yes. And also heat transfer. So coupled analysis, CFD heat transfer together. So multi-physics, yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, by the way, we're not done. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so, um, you know, the next thing is a, is a pretty hot topic, and, and I find these uh, solvers that can pull this off to be um, just really sexy. Uh, the topology optimization. So this is where, well, well, I'll let you describe that. Well, topology optimization is actually a tool to help uh, mainly designers who wants to uh, know the shape they have to design for their model. Because w- the the way designer works is that they are doing all the work by experience. So the model, everything depends on the designer capacity himself. So this tool, the topology optimization, helps him to just by defining the boundary condition, the loads, and a design volume he wants to, to design. And the software just give him uh, what would be the shape of the model, which would fulfill to a certain criteria that like stress, uh, resistance, uh, or it can even be used for dynamic uh, analysis also. So, so this is the kind of analysis where let, let's say you have two connection points on a beam. You know how it needs to connect to mm-hmm. the rest of your assembly. Um, you you just go ahead and let the the region between those two endpoints be a giant block. And then, um, you know, the stress contours will define uh, where you need to have material. So you end up getting a very organic shape that is optimized for weight. You know, there'll be holes cut up, cut out of it. I mean, the the thing you might get at the end may not be manufacturable, um, but it's a very organic shape, like a human. Yes, you're right. It's exactly uh, what I meant. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And that and that and that seems to be a pretty high end specialized uh, capability. Again, you know, I've I have seen a few tools out there that can do this. The only one that comes to mind right now is uh, uh, there's a product from Altair mm-hmm. that I believe does this. Um, so we're we're still not done. Um, adaptive mesh analysis. So you know, this is 
you know, really mm-hmm. hot topic. Uh, I've seen it done in both CFD and in FEA, particularly nonlinear mm-hmm. FEA. But this is um, where you have algorithms that will sense when more mesh is needed mm-hmm. in a particular region. And then during the solve, uh, refine the mesh automatically in those regions, correct? Yes, you're right. Uh, actually, this uh, feature is only available for the linear static analysis. So it is not for nonlinear. But it is exactly what you said. You define a certain uh, region which can be uh, used for remeshing. And during the solve, uh, it will deter- determine the areas which need more mesh and remesh afterwards. Uh, so it can even remesh several times uh, depending on the precision you want. Okay, I think I finally made it to the uh, end of this page. And, you know, you, um, mm-hmm. of course, talk about parallel uh, solvers. So uh, could you tell me a little bit more about uh, what you've done there and what you can scale up to? Yeah, of course. So uh, what you were saying is that we have uh, at the same time some capacities for the, let's say, the basic users who want to do linear analysis, but at the same time, very uh, high-end uh, feature. So I can explain to you the concept of Midas and effects. The concept is that we want to provide a tool which is very efficient in every domain for any type of uh, user. So it's a very big, uh, let's say, um, it's a very big motivation for us. We, we want to uh, touch as well the CAD designers who need a tool which is a bit more high-end, so which can give more robust uh, capacities like the contact analysis you were talking about. Because this is not necessarily something used but only by professionals. The CAD designer would also to make uh, big assemblies uh, of a lot of parts. And this is basically what we do. So we, ha- we have this on, once, uh, on one side. And on the other side, um, we provide features, let's say, for the Nastran users. So the Nastran wh- users who are more um, acquainted to high-end uh, capa- capabilities, uh, they, they will find almost uh, similar capabilities in NFX. And in order to adapt to the, these two types of very, very different users, we decided to divide NFX in two modes. So actually, this is the same interface, but we have two modes. One is called designer mode and one is called analyst mode. So if you go in the designer mode, um, it will be more uh, easy to use because you will have a bit less options in the menu, uh, but it is only for the uh, CAD users to, to see it more clearly, uh, the, the workflow, let's say. So in, when they are using this designer mode, they can process very quickly uh, any CAD model, so just importing, apply all the conditions and get the results. Um, whereas if you go in the analysis mode, you will have every feature of uh, any high-end tool. Well, I'm not saying we have 100% of all the features, of course, but uh, there's more or less uh, anything you, you need so the, to, to perform any high-end analysis like you were uh, underlining. Uh, not only static, but nonlinear, dynamic, explicit analysis, uh, optimization, fatigue analysis, and even more will come in next years. Uh, we'll we'll talk about the new release at the end, uh, I think. And uh, yeah, we, we will. But uh, we have a a term from journalism <laughs> here that I'm often guilty of. It's called uh, burying the lead. And um, you you just highlighted one of the other, I guess, one of the most important things about the tool that caught my attention, and that is. Um, you have one single yeah. pre and post user interface for all of these capabilities mm-hmm. that we just talked through. And that is extremely unusual. Um, you know, I think if you look at the big companies, MSC, uh, Ansys and the others, you know, for them to get these capabilities, um, they've had to go out and acquire other companies that specialize in just those capabilities. You know, fatigue, for example, or nonlinear analysis versus linear analysis. These were uh, different solvers from different development teams that were acquired and then sort of put together. 
And over time, the goal is for all of these companies to try to come up with a unified user interface to drive them, but that's a very difficult thing to do. Um, so, so if it's actually true that you can do all of these, uh, you know, various genres of CFD and FEA, and you have them in this one uh, user interface, which I haven't used, but I've seen, uh, you know, all the videos that you have on YouTube. And to me, you know, I, I sort of look at it uh, almost like an artistic, uh, from an artistic point of view, it does look reasonable to me. It looks uh, like a, you know, a very modern user interface, not something that was developed in 1980. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. This is uh, exactly what uh, we really have this one unique interface. Uh, I was talking about these two modes, but actually you can go from one mode to another very uh, efficiently. So this is not really a separation of the interface. Uh, so th this full interface is uh, comprised all the, the type of analysis I've talked about. So you import your model, you can, uh, and afterwards you can do any type of analysis on it directly. So th there is no, even no switch for CFD, let's say. So you can create a structural model and you can perform on it as well, structural and CFD on the same time. You don't have to make two models. You don't have to do that. Just create several analysis case and perform different type of analysis on it. Now, uh, yeah, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you about. In a multi-physics scenario, often two yeah. different genres of analysis just take linear static uh, structural analysis and some sort of CFD or heat transfer analysis. Um, usually you need two very different meshes for those, um, those kinds of analysis of the same object. Um, how do you handle that? Well, of course, um, if you perform CFD analysis, you will have to use Tetra mesh and, uh, usually you don't use high end, uh, mesh. So it, it's first order Tetra mesh. So if you use first order Tetra mesh, structural analysis will be, uh, you can also perform linear analysis at the same time. Uh, but as you, you say, of course, uh, sometimes you have to think about that uh, in function of the type of analysis you have to do. The mesh, of course, have to be defined uh, accordingly. You cannot uh, define the mesh and then do every analysis on it. So, But you have this possibility, I mean. So it depends on your model, uh, really. Well, well, let's talk about this uh, concept that you mentioned of the expert mode versus the designer mode or, or analysis mode versus designer mode. Uh, now, one of the things that um, I think we'll see more of in the future is companies that have either an analyst on site who is an expert at FEA and CFD who uh, takes care of all the high end work, but does create apps, if you will that are, you know, structured, very simple products that other engineers who are not CAE experts can use for the specific products that that company makes. So you go from a very general purpose tool to something that is sort of tailor-made for uh, analyzing a mm -hmm. toaster, for example. Um, is that something that's possible through scripting? Um, is that part of the idea with these two modes? Oh, yes, you're right. Uh, I, we have exactly something like that in NFX2. So uh, we have a feature called auto-update. Uh, so it means that when you import, uh, let's say you do analysis on a model, CAD model, you have some boundary condition and loads and everything. And you, when you change the CAD model, you don't want to do the, this process again because uh, a lot of factors, uh, you don't want to assign everything again. So just yeah, we call that uh, we call that yes. CAD associative. So actually, you can you can just pull a new CAD model, and by drag and dropping the condition of the previous model on the new one, it will assign automatically the loads and the boundary conditions. And uh, I know what you will ask: uh, How is it working? Uh, it is working with the color of uh, the plane and the surfaces uh, on which you assign the loads and the boundaries. So if you have the same color to the previous model and the new model, the loads will be assigned to uh, the surface. So it is working very smartly in this way. So to, to answer your first question about your specialist engineer, which is creating models, 
what you can do is just ask the specialist to make a kind of template model for the designer. So tell him, you will have to define this load, this load, and make this analysis. And then he can define the color of the plane of, uh, on, let's say, template CAD model. And the designer only have to drag and drop the condition on his own model to, and then to launch the analysis. I see. Uh, so in terms of CAD integration, what, uh, what tools do you read in directly today? Or how do you get geometry into Midas NFX? Yes, uh, Midas GenFX has also an integrated uh, CAD import translator. So we actually support, uh, I think it's 13 uh, different CAD uh, types. So the types of model we can import right now are so it's Parasolid, uh, Katia, SolidWorks, Step, IGS, Arcus, uh, Unigraphics, Inventor also, and Proe, or uh, the new name, Creo. So all, all that is supported. Uh, now I just remembered another uh, interesting point. Uh, you have some capability for automated geometry cleanup. Yes. Uh, so this would be something like, uh, you know, some of the things that I've seen in, you know, my, my, my old favorite space claim or, um, synchronous technology, um, some of these tools where you can, you know, identify rounds or holes based on their size and, and have them removed intelligently. It's uh, almost this concept. Yes. You, you have several tools. One is uh, automatic simplification tool. So it can find all the holes in your, your model. Then you can define a certain uh, diameter and delete all the holes uh, whose diameter is smaller than these uh, diameter. You can do the same for the fillets. And we have some manual tool uh, for deleting, deleting manually these uh, holes and fillets. And very soon we'll have new tools, but I will not talk about that right now. Okay. Well, again... I have to say, having worked at, uh, you know, some of these big companies, um, every single line item that we've just talked through is, you know, started off as a specific product or as a separate product, um, you know, either within a company or, or, you know, was acquired and brought into the company, uh, with, you know, a very large team of people, mm -hmm. you know, for example, just working on this problem of uh, how do you defeature mm -hmm. geometry automatically, um, or fatigue, you know, there's a team of people in a specific code generally, uh, devoted to just mm -hmm. the fatigue part. So you've got all of these solutions and I have to ask again, yeah. you know, um, how, you know, where did these come from? Did you, are they all developed in house? Well, yes. Uh, we actually have more than 20 years of experience on FEA, uh, market. So it began with civil, uh, products. So we began to develop product mainly for civil engineering. And from these civil products, the, we imported, let's say, the features and we developed it uh, more for mechanical. And this is, uh, this is how this mechanical product came uh, on the market. So all, a lot of these features were developed initially and some new features were developed. And we have very talented developers. We have more than 100 developers right now. So I don't really know how they are working uh, because I'm not a developer. But uh, I know we have a big team and they are all focused on the development and the new features. And every year we have a bunch of new features which are coming. This year we'll have more than 100 new features who will come too. Uh, they are really fast. So while Midas NFX has uh, not been around uh, for for that long, uh, the civil side uh, of the of the company for simulation has been around for twenty years. So you have a lot of experience yes, there. Yes, yes, you're right. We have more than although yeah, we have more than thirty thousand licenses for these civil products uh, over the world. Now um, I feel compelled to tell the only civil engineering joke that I know. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> the the first law of civil engineering is if it moves it's broken <laughs> yeah <laughs> i probably just offended uh most of your user base <laughs> i I'm, i hope they are not listening <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Um, all right. So, uh, yes, you started in Asia. Uh, well, the civil product is beyond just Asia today. Right? Yes, we, we are distributing in more than 100 countries over the world. Yeah. Um, but Midas NFX, uh, you've taken your time and you've rolled it out a little closer to home. Um, and uh, what uh, what kinds of customers do you see moving from, a, let's say, an established uh, CAE tool, an MSC or, or, an, Astra, uh, or an ANSYS or, um, you know, maybe a, an Altair? What, what kinds of cu- uh, customers are attracted to Midas NFX and why? Well, this is a good question. So mainly we have uh, Nastron users who are uh, quite interested. So one uh, reason is because the analysis pattern is uh, similar to Nastron, but the workflow is much more easy. And we have also the same terminology than Nastron. So we have the text file also. It is possible to uh, to view it and to edit this text file. We have the import export of Nastron mesh. So it is quite compatible, uh, let's say, with Nastron. So this is the first uh, users who are interested. Then we have a few users from uh, all the products like ANSYS, for example, because they like this integrated interface. Uh, you know, uh, ANSYS have this uh, big uh, mastodont. Uh, I don't know if it's, uh, it's in an English word or not, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, mastodon? Uh, elephant, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Maybe it's a French word. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, beside that, we have also a lot of users who comes from uh, CIE embedded in CAD softwares like SolidWorks Simulation. Uh, because as I was telling, they need a tool which is more robust uh, and give accurate results too. But at the same time, provide a lot of features like uh, explicit analysis, uh, automatic contact, and um, Sometimes we think CAD users only want to do linear, but a lot of them are interested with high-end uh, analysis, especially if it's easy to use. Yeah. So you really are trying to um, attack both sides in the market, sort of the design level and the analyst level. Um, what, what about uh, pricing? And you know, you don't need to uh, give your exact pricing here, and obviously that's going to change from region to region. But um, if you if you were to just sort of give a comparison to high-end uh, FEA and low end FEA, the traditional tools out there. How do you compare? Well, I would say the pricing is really fair for all the capacity we give in one unique interface. Uh, this price is really good. So, uh, of course, good can be very relative. So, as you said, uh, I can say it's almost the price is almost close to these. Uh, CAE embedded in CAD software, but yeah, I, I like to call those uh, the upfront CAE tools. Yes, but for the same price, we have you know all these high end capacities uh, at the same time. So if I don't know how to compare really with the high, uh, with very high end softwares, oh, I think that's a that's a pretty good. Uh, I think everyone see you know already knows the difference between. Uh, the cost of, uh, say, a, a Mechanica and an and Ansys suite. Okay, so great. you've probably answered the question well enough. All right. Well, I, I don't really have uh, the technical expertise myself to evaluate all these capabilities. And, you know, and I just want to be honest here. Um, you know, this is this sounds fantastic and often things that uh, sound <laughs> Better than they are sometimes are. <laughs> yes, uh, I think I messed that up, but uh, <laughs> you get the idea. But so, so what I'd like to do is, um, you know, ask my my listeners mm-hmm. to uh, try it. You know, to you know, I, I know that I have a lot of uh, both sophisticated and uh, casual mm-hmm. CAE users in the in the listener base. Um, how can people? try the tool or how can they learn more about it? Do you, do you have some sort of an evaluation that people could uh, test it out? Well, yes. Uh, we If you just go on our website, which is uh, MidasNFX.com, you will find a link to download a 30 days trial. So just by requesting on the form of uh, this trial and we will send it uh, to you in 24 hours. 
so you will be free to test it as you want uh, during these 30 days. And there will be no limitation on the software. Uh, if you want to test the CFD as well, you can request for the CFD li trial license too. So you can really have a wide overview of the software like that. Yeah, so I'd encourage my listeners, uh, you know, when you're at home and um, <laughs> you're not playing with the kids and you have all this time on your hands, um, you know, if some of you would give this a try uh, and maybe comment even uh, at the at the blog, um, I would really appreciate hearing your feedback on this tool. I'm, I'm intrigued to hear how well it stacks up against all the stated capabilities. Um, so NFX 2013 is coming out pretty soon. Uh, what can you tell me about that? Well, I prefer to keep the suspense about all the new features we will add, but it will definitely add a bunch of new uh, analysis and very interesting features. We will do uh, the release of the 20th of June, uh, so it's very close, and a big presentation webinar uh, about that. So we will have the link to register for this webinar on our website very soon. I hope. So, so those are um, sort of all virtual ways to uh, learn more about uh, Midas. Uh, what is what is your distribution channel like outside of Asia? How could people in the states, for example, uh, you know, buy it or um, talk to somebody about it? Actually, it's uh, there's two ways. One way is to contact one of our resellers. So since last year, we had uh, 20 new resellers. So it, the growth was really, uh, really big. And uh, the, the names of this reseller will be very soon on our website. Uh, otherwise, you can contact us directly too. So... Or by going on her website and less letting us some uh, information, uh, we will contact you. Well, great. Uh, Cyprien, it's uh, not very often that I get to speak to uh, someone in Korea. And um, I have one final <laughs> question is totally unrelated to everything else we've talked about. Um, now, in, in, you know, recently, I would say within the last month or two, we've been hearing a lot in the yeah. press about uh, Kim Jong Un uh, in North Korea, and you know he's been shooting missiles off, talking about uh, nuclear threat, uh, you know, and it seems to be escalated a lot farther beyond the you know the normal things that we were used to hearing from North Korea. Um, what, what's the feeling like there in 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 uh, South Korea? Well, actually, this is a question uh, every foreigner here is uh, asking. So as a French, I was also wondering the same. But uh, as I'm here, I can tell you that almost nothing happens here. So uh, what we see from uh, an external point of view is that there's a lot of movement. He's quite dangerous. He's uh, threatening everyone, something like that. But actually, uh, if you understand the Korean culture and if you listen to what they're saying, they know that he's just bluffing, you know. Uh, you ask them, what do you think of this Kim Jong-un and his uh, threat and everything, the missile, and they they just laughing, you know, like, uh, yeah, he wants to make something, but no one is believing in, in what he's saying. And actually, it's quite normal here. Sometimes there's we can hear about the, the, some helicopters who are <laughs> going, but uh, it's just prevention measure, I think. Uh, so actually, nothing really happens here. All right. Um, that's fair. You know, it's, it's sometimes, uh, hard to know exactly what's happening, uh, you know, this far away. Yeah. And you have I have interpretation, think... uh, through the media and, you know, I think they, they, I think they like to overplay, um, you know, how much fear there is in the streets of South Korea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's the same everyone for, uh, everywhere. The journalists are always uh, increasing uh, a bit the fear of the people and uh, playing on that to make uh, big news or something like that. Uh, actually, I think it's not really reflecting the truth. Well, Cyprian, I, I really appreciate you coming on uh, the show today. And, uh, you know, we ran a little bit longer than I expected even. So thanks for staying on the entire time. Now, uh, where, again, can people find out more about Midas NFX? I believe, you know, your website address and then also you have a YouTube channel. 
Yes, we have YouTube channel, we have a LinkedIn uh, profile, we have on Facebook too. So or you can find us uh, almost everywhere. And I tell you again the name of the website, which is MidasNFX.com. Uh, otherwise, by searching Midas and FX on YouTube, you will find my personal channel where I am uh, making a lot of videos about NFX, or tutorials and everything. And a last thing also, if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can download the app Midas and FX, uh, which is, uh, you will find a lot of tutorials and video tutorials directly in this app. So this app is for free. And it can give you an uh, introduction of what NFX can do. Oh, great. Well, thanks again for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Th well, thanks to you, Jeff. And I hope to, to be calm next time. That's all for this episode. Thanks for listening to the Life Upfront Engineering Podcast. Visit lifeupfront.com to comment and connect with me on Twitter, Google+, and LinkedIn. Also, you can really help the show by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again. Until next time.